Hey everybody, so today we're going to look at Clash Distance and we're going to look at that through Jupyter Notebook and Python. Uh, so the way that I got the Clash Distance was using Dynamo to pull out all the Clash uh, coordinates. Uh, so each of those points just pulling out the coordinates and then plotting that or I mean uh, pushing that to an Excel document. And so we're going to read that in through Jupyter Notebooks and with Python. And then we're going to do we're going to use Pythagorean theorem to figure out the distance between uh, one clash to every other clash. And then we're going to filter out the clashes that exceed five feet. And then we're going to get a sum of that uh, value. And then that'll be our density value for each clash. Uh, and then we're going to plot that information. So I'm going to skim through this notebook, but I'm going to let you guys have this notebook um, just like any other resource. It's totally free. You can download it and find it below in the description. Um, it's a OneDrive link where you can download any of these documents. Um, so feel free to download this. Use this however way you want. I think the best way uh learning this stuff is just getting into it i'll also give you a sample data set to work with as well um, so definitely feel free to use any of those things and reach out if you have questions um so the jupiter notebook is, the first part is just resources uh, this is markdown code that just shows a bunch of resources that i've listed here this this template that I use uh, continually grows. So in future videos, you may see this uh, and it might be much different. So uh, feel free to, to take a look at this list and use you know whatever resource you see here. Um, so uh, getting into the code, the first thing we do is import our libraries. So that's pandas and plotly. That's all we're using uh, for this. Uh, the data that we're going to be using is a data frame called, um, or it's an Excel file that we're pulling in as a data frame called clash XYZ data dash raw. And to show you that, if we just run that df.head, you can see um, what that data looks like. So we have clash test, which we're going to plot that um, as well, as long with the, the density value. We'll have separate plots for clash test, trade, and density value. Um, so the clash test is just what test it's in. The first item on the left is the the main the first main item that's being clashed against another item. And so that's what determines the trade. And then we have the coordinates. We're going to split those into uh, just regular Python list. So X, Y, and Z are going to have their own list. And then we're just going to get length of just one of those lists. So in this case, we're just getting Y. And I want to show you real quick what the length of that looks like. So we have um, 3,200 uh, points in this model. So there's 3,200 clashes in this model that we're we're going to be looking at okay now when we're getting into the pythagorean theorem what we're going to do is get the y side of each of those um points to every other point so we're essentially going to be looking at this list 3200 times 3200 which is about uh 10 million values uh, so, and all that is, it's again, it's 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 the y side of one point to every other point, and then so on throughout the rest of the points. And then we're going to add up all those those values. So first we'll run this, and I'm going to show you the I'm going to just show you the length of this list list. And so this does take a while uh, to run. And as you can imagine, 3,200 is a lot. But if you have 10,000, there's going to be a lot more than 10 million uh, values. So again, this is this is taking one point and then getting the y side, so the uh, the y axis of where that point is, um, just the length to in the y uh, to each point, uh, each clash point. So one point to every other point goes down to the next one and then goes one point to every other point and that's kind of what we're doing here and we do the same thing for the x side and then since we're doing this in 3d we have to get the z side as well and then pretty much all we're going to be doing for that part is getting uh the square root and then um, just adding them all up um, so we add up all the values 
And that's what this uh, code does here. And then down here, we're going to get the S value, which is just the length. So we'll run that code. And then that's the Pythagorean theorem. Uh, we're done with that part. We have the length uh, to each, you know, one point to every other point. And then what this is going to do is give us a nice structured list. So we're going to split the list into point to every point. So for the first point, that list is going to have 3,200 uh, points. It's going to have starting with itself, uh, I mean, uh, the distance uh, to itself. So it's going to have zero as the first value. And I'll just show you this real quick, or at least the, the first part, and that might give you a nice visual. But I definitely recommend um, checking out these, um, taking a look at the, the data that's generated at each step, just so that you can have a good understanding of kind of what's going on. Oops, it looks like I spelled that wrong. And as you can imagine, this one will take a while. It is 10 million values, so I may have to pause it in a minute. But um, what we're going to look at is just the first value in the first list. But there's 3,200 lists uh, in this in this um, in this list. It's a it's a list of lists. If you're familiar with Dynamo, it's like that. It's a list of lists. So we have 3,200 lists. Each of those lists are a points uh, length. So each length to each of the other points. Um, so starting with the first point, it's going to look at the distance between itself, which, you know, we could, that's kind of an irrelevant point, but we don't drop it because it doesn't affect our density value. Um, but then it goes to the next one. It compares the distance um, to itself to the next point, And then you have a, a length value there and so on to each, each point. But again, Take a look at this list. I think you'll get a better idea um, of what's going on if you actually play with this stuff. All right, I had to pause it for a little bit, but uh, you can see here we have split S, um, and here's our list of lists. It starts off with 0, 0.0 because it takes that first uh, coordinate. So up there in the head, you saw the, the first trade, which was arch. Uh, it was the coordinate, and what it's looking at is the distance between that point and to itself. Uh, so the same locations, the same point, and that would be zero. And then it looks at that one to the next point, uh, which would be 54 feet away. Now, as I mentioned, we're going to remove some of those values. Um, anything above five feet which is what we're going to do in the next uh bit of code this was an interesting problem too to to solve so i definitely recommend checking this out um i definitely am not an expert at python so this was a fun little problem I was trying to figure out how to loop through that list and then um get the the uh, you know to be able to remove it and then and then pull it back out into a, you know still a structured list because the output of this is a cleaned split list it still is it, it the the uh, list is still structured uh, and it, if all points if all distances to all the points are do exceed five feet it will leave an empty uh, bracket so it, it leaves an empty list keeping the structure of this this list so this was a really fun bit of code it took me a little bit to figure this out um so i definitely recommend just playing with this and seeing how this works um because this you know i, I definitely find this uh coming in in you know handy uh in future scripts or future jupyter notebooks so definitely check it out i would also say don't uh don't run if you do run these lists, uh, if you want to compare things, trim up the list, the original Excel file, just trim it up to just like 10 values or something like that because uh, when you're working with 3200, it can bog down your computer quite a bit. And if you leave those, uh, those little blocks of code running, 
where they print out the the entire list it, it definitely makes your file super huge it took mine from five megabytes to 50 megabytes so definitely watch that because it'll bog it down and you you can run into other issues as well um so anyways we get the sum or i mean we split everything that's five feet uh, away so that we can get a better um a better heat map because if we are looking at everything you know it's kind of irrelevant if if you know if there's a clash on the other side of a building affecting the density of a clash on you know the the south side and that one's from you know the north side of the building it, it there's that makes no sense so that's why we're clearing out and just getting anything that's below five feet and then what we're going to do is just get the sum of each of those lists and then we're going to divide it by 10 just to simplify it but you don't really need to do this um i just do it to simplify the values because they they're pretty big numbers and then here we're just adding the density column and then we'll take a look at that this is writing the excel file and then this one is just printing out the the head and you can see our density values over to the right and i've already run the plots so you can see kind of what's going on here as well so the first one is just the clash test very easy to to set to run this code you just do uh the data the data that you want so in this case it's just our data frame so df and then we uh put something in for the x-axis then y-axis and z-axis in this case it's called x y and z so very easy and then for our color it's the clash test and then over here we have a nice little legend um, and then we can orbit around this data and kind of see what's going on so some pretty cool stuff same thing except for this is for the trade you can see that the majority of the clashes in this building are coming from HVAC systems. So visually you can quickly see what's going on there. And then down here we have a density. So it's the same thing. We just put density and Plotly is smart enough to know that this is a heat map type uh, data and not uh, so, like a like a category. Um, so it takes those values and now we have a nice uh, density uh, legend over here and then we can see quickly in this plot where some of the more denser areas are so you can see over here where um, the there's quite a bit more density in the clashes and that could tell us that maybe that area needs to be a higher focus for us during coordination meetings maybe we need to prior to prioritize those locations um so that uh you know we can uh, figure out what's going on or, or identify if those are truly problem areas and a lot of this is still um, kind of just research and ex exploring the possibilities of this data uh, we may find that this data isn't that valuable or that maybe it is really really valuable um, so it's I'm still trying to identify the patterns but if you have any questions or run into any interesting insights in that data I would love to know um, you know I'm, I'm always open to sharing this information and and you know just trying to to coordinate and clash you know projects a little bit better so um yeah so let me know if you have any questions and i'll see you in the next video guys thanks